All right, we're back. Time for After the Beat, where we take your tweets using the hashtag TheMMABeat. Uh, and I am joined, of course, by Danny Segura, Brian Campbell, and Iceman himself, Chuck Mindenhall. All right, here we are. Time to get these going. All right, there, Danny, you go first. Dana recently resigned, or resigned, I should say, for another seven <laughs> years. Different. Do you guys think that's too long? I say give us three more years of Dana and then hand the reins over to my boy Brian Stan. <laughs> what? Now, before, hold, hold, hold on. <laughs> Let me say this. I want you to answer the question about Dana. However, the idea that you want to give this job to Brian Stan <laughs> is truly one of the worst ideas imaginable. And here's why. Brian Stan, Brian Stan is too good for us. Yeah. The person who takes that role has to Dude, say things. You need and, the best liars at the top. Man. Yes. <laughs> you need a good liar at the top, not Captain America. That would be the so most true. corrupting thing of him imaginable. So, no, I don't want to see that at all. But, ask the question for Dana, what do you think? <laughs> Well, I think, you know, in boxing, we've seen promoters, right, last how long? Like Bob Arum, 87. 87, so. Yeah. yeah, is that a good thing? Not, not, <laughs> I mean, not necessarily, but. Bob's still doing big time work. Luckily, Don King ran out of fighters, but keep going, yeah. So, I mean, seven years, they, they, they know why it's not that old. I think, you know, w there was a time when we've talked about how he, he kind of felt checked out, but I think we probably need to reassess that because he seems very fired up and he seems very passionate about his work again. Um, you know, I don't know what it is. You know, sometimes everybody goes through that, you know, in whatever industry. I mean, Greg Jackson, when talking to you on the MAR, he, he was talking about that. He felt burnt out for a little bit and had to, you know, step back uh, before, you know, getting involved in MMA again and, and, and cornering fighters. I, I don't necessarily think it's, it's a bad thing, uh, him resigning for seven years. You know, he's yeah. still a very popular figure in the sport. Um, you know, and also, like, who's, who's out there that could possibly replace him? Jail. Um, Leon Rebney, yeah. <laughs> Mexico. It's one of those situations where I feel like cyclically we go back like every couple of years and say like, you know, the organization needed Dana White to get us to this point. Now they need to replace him because they have to sustain. Mm -hmm. It's one of those weird situations. So he cashes in on what, $360 million during the sale and you think, and he did seem to check out. He seemed to check yeah. out, didn't seem like he really cared that much anymore and I thought maybe that was going to start to be the tail end Me of too. his era. And he's back in a bigger capacity. And he, I think these new things like ESPN excite him because it was the goals from way back. I think yeah. these, there's still things out there for him to feel good about and to accomplish. He's fired up about that Chinese uh, performance institute that's yes. opening and like the expansion. He gets, he gets excited about these types of things. You can still see that there's absolutely a bit of tone. Like, you know, we talked about the Greg Hardys, the, you know, putting them on the first ESPN card. There's like a tone deaf kind of like, I, I, this is my decision. We make a decision. It's north, south, we go. We don't like, and I feel like there's a little bit of like, that will probably get in some hot water at some point, but that's the way the identity of the UFC has worked for so long, you know, that it's just, it would feel weird without him right this second, I feel, you know what I mean? Um, but I would say in another six months, that could change again, and you might be like, nah, Dana's had it, you know? It, we go through this all the time. Um, seven years is a long is a long time, but he's all we've known in the, in the UFC, yeah. so it's kind of, it's a difficult question to really t to answer. Every time you think he's hurting him, he doesn't. That's all I'm going to say. You know what I mean? Like, at the times it seems like he's really doing something that's going to be detrimental, it doesn't seem to bother. It will bother him, and he doesn't really have to sit under that scrutiny for very long. You're always going to juggle the good yeah. with, with the bad with him. It's good that he does seem re-inspired to pushing the sport as far as it can go, but uh, he's so uniquely qualified for the job, and, and you mentioned the, the sort of the negative qualities you need to have to do this job right, and he's still a great quote, as much as we sit here and debate the things he says, that uh, I couldn't imagine anyone else in that seat... I couldn't even imagine who would replace him and yeah. keep going. It's nobody turns losses into success like him. You know, I think that that's his identity. Like he's had so many successes. We would identify everything is upward. Even when it seems like they're falling down, they, they do something the next step to take the sport somewhere else. It's just, it's crazy. I'm not sure anybody else could have done that, you know? So it's, it's a very, it's, it's a very complicated situation with that guy. Um, without knowing exactly what kinds of decisions he's making and how he's making them on a much more minute level, I think it's really impossible to assess yeah. replacement or not. Um, yeah. You know, you want to say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but there's a lot of things that could be better. But at the same time, if you were, if you, let's say you had money invested in UFC and he was in charge, would you feel good about it? Probably. Probably would, you know. So yeah, there's there is that Vince McMahon type yes. feeling that as long as he's still driving the ship, you're going to have problems and issues with him. But you, 
trust yeah. for the most part that you're That's still going to get a really yeah. good it's going to get really it's going to get where it's supposed to go yeah. basically and he's still edgy enough that that's where he retains the trust that's where he holds it there's still enough of a connection to the old UFC and the old way of doing things when he would just swear reporters out and say inappropriate things and stuff like that where there's this iron fist you know even though they're yeah. completely corporate today that iron fist is still an attraction in there and a trust as a fan that even for us that rip apart the, the decisions he makes has he blocked you on twitter no no really Wow. Up your game, bro. Yeah, what are you Look, doing? I just, Step I, it up, loser. I sling hot truth and people, they just accept it. I don't, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Next. Uh, okay, there. Uh, who watches hockey? What did you guys think? They, he put Sergachev. I don't, I mean, I, it was, uh, what was the guy's name? Oh, right there. Said the, the, the knockout? Thousand times. Yes. Talk about the knockout? Yeah. Uh, here, I, I forgot, I, I'm having a, a moment here. The guy's name was, yeah, uh, Savechnikov. So, the, so this cat was only like 19 years old, right? Yeah. And about, I mean, that's a, bold, that's a bold thing to drop the yeah. gloves. Did like, you guys see the hockey fight? Did, did you see it? I saw, I saw some, like, people talking about it on Twitter, but I didn't see a clip. You didn't see the clip? No. Bro, he got crushed. He got, yeah, he he got really clocked. really two giant right hands. Perfect setup. Yeah. yeah. Straight right hand. I was impressed by that. What and I, and wait, it's, the, it's rare the, that you see a guy really go out. Yeah, here, I'll show it to you. But let me ask you this while I show it to him. What do you make of the, what do you make of the ethics of, uh, of hockey fighting. Do you think hockey should allow it? I mean, see, again, it's a complicated question because it's like it's been part of the game, so it's almost a traditionalist attitude to be like, well, it's, you just keep it because that's what they do, you know? And if they want to solve something, they drop the gloves, you know, that sort of thing. I've never minded it, but of course, I cover fighting. It's not like fighting is reprehensible to me, so I don't really mind that being part of the game. But, uh, yeah. Watch. Danny's watching right now. Yes. Really? This is yeah. Danny's reaction. A couple of right hands. Okay. I, I was impressed that he was that thoroughly out. Watch. Like, when he goes down, he's out, you know? Oh. Yeah, that was right on Smoked the Smoked him, right? Oof, that's some world star. That's some world star, world <laughs> you star You would stuff. say that, millennial. You know what? I, I actually don't think they should allow it. I really don't, because I, actually I kind of celebrated it because Ovechkin plays for my team, but I, I don't think they should allow it, but... <sighs> I mean, if the parties are, love it. If the parties jobs, are okay man. with it, there's a goon. There are goons yeah. on the. End of oh, that but Ovechkin's not a goon. <laughs> I know he's not. A lot of the a lot of the guys who can fight well are actually pretty good players. Yeah, they've actually gotten rid of the goon. The goon era. Role because now, like the guy on the Caps, who's like their semi goon, yeah. Tom Wilson. Uh, Is there a difference between goon and enforcer? The, the, no, the, the yeah, same the synonymous same terms. Okay. They used to have guys who like literally could not play hockey for s. And then they were just they would just beat you know they just crush you in a fight. Oh, now, that guy's name the Grim Reaper, Stu Grimson. That guy was the best. Oh, then what was his name? Um, the guy who had the the CTE profile to the New York Times. Um, Way to bring us down. Well, it's the reality. <laughs> this is partly why the NHL has yeah. moved away from it. I just find it kind of crazy that they like hockey fans. I would like to tell you that they're split on the ethics of fighting. They're not that split. Most are like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's kind of wild sure. how they just instituted it. Well, most it. of the fights are, that's a brutal one. Yeah. Comparatively. Yeah, like, yeah. most of them are like, you know, guys grab their jerseys, they, they throw a couple punches, yeah. short rabbit punch, and then, and and then, then it's over. the first person takes the knee yes. on the ice, they just exactly. call Exactly. Yeah. Everybody bangs their sticks, and we're like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's like this old custom of like a yeah. duel out on the front yard between two, you know. It's funny to me. I mean, the guys learn how, how to fight on skates. Yeah. I remember I did a piece, because uh, remember Donald uh, Brashear? Yeah. He got into MMA. He had a couple of fights, and uh, I did a piece on him back for ESPN in the day, but I was talking about, like, how much training he had to do, basically, as a hockey player, like, to learn to fight. He's like, oh, you you learn that like any skill. Like, you have to know how to fight, you know, if you're a guy who's going to end up fighting. And I was like, you know, just how to fight on skates and when to grab the sweater and all this. I'm like, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that there's actually a... Uh, a technique to this whole thing. So this, my my uh, my wife didn't know this. She didn't really watch hockey. You know, you guys didn't watch hockey in Columbia, no, no, right? No. She she knew what hockey was and had I guess seen highlights or something. She didn't know they don't allow fighting, but in the NBA, if I threw a punch, they like jump on you immediately. Whereas in hockey, they let it play out. Yeah. She didn't know they did that. So I took her to a game and I forget his name. He was six seven. He played for uh, the Blackhawks for a time. I forget what his name was. And they dropped the gloves and they were circling. She goes, what are they doing? Goes, they're about to fight. She goes, they're not going to stop it. I'm like, stop it. They're about to celebrate it. And they went and just dueled it out. It, was, it wasn't as like, vicious as the uh, Ovechkin one, but it was comparatively quite vicious. She goes, that's part of the game? Yeah. I go, that's part of the game. Well, I'll tell you what. If you really watch hockey and there's some bad blood between the teams, for whatever reason, and you know that those two teams are going to play, and something happened in the previous game, and you know those, the, occasionally you get a really good fight. Like, you get the guys who are really meaning to yeah. do harm. Yeah. Those are fun. 
because they'll do it right away, like right as the puck drops. There, they don't even yeah. wait; they just drop the yeah. gloves and go. Those see, those things are. I've fun. seen two guys. I've seen guys in penalty boxes. Talk to each other and be like, as soon as we get out, you want to do get out? Get out of the penalty box yeah. and immediately drop and go. But, what makes but it go to low kooky, level man. minor league hockey and it's like expected. It's yeah. part of it. Oh, like it's actually. Yeah, I'm, part I, of the I'm game, more yeah. opposed to that where it's like they feel they have to. Bro, that's the Hunger Games yeah. down there. Yeah. yeah. That's you different. remember in Connecticut the Danbury Trashers? Yeah. That, like low, yeah. low, low, low. They were run by an organized <laughs> yeah. crime family. Yes. The fights that used to go on in that tiny place were yeah. just. Friggin' insane, yeah. You've never been to a, you've never been to any of this stuff? Uh, I think I've, I went to a hockey game. I saw the Panthers play, but I don't know. I don't remember watching any fights. But I know it's a very physical sport. And I know I know about the fighting. I've seen yeah. you know I've seen clips and stuff. I, I I respect it. I think it's I think it's cool, you know. But like I think as long as the parties involved are okay with it, like you know, yeah, go for it. Right. Plus, they're not long fights, right? It's like 10, 15 they're seconds. They're pretty short. Yeah, they're pretty yeah, short. They're, they're, they're quick. Short. Yeah. Every now and again, you get a long one, but they're quick. Yeah. And college hockey, by the way. None of Can that you happens. fight in the NCAA? No. So, like, you see them like get into like, and then they just kind of also, stop. They how, want to. You see them want to, but they don't. They don't get in. How often do knockouts happen? Because I, I figure with the like skates, that, very, very rare. With the skates, you you can't really plant them. Yeah. yeah. No, you can't. Look at it's Ovechkin. All, Go back muscle, and watch. Yeah. Ovechkin leans on the front of his skates while Sovechnikov is kind of flat on them, so he's like driving into the punch. Part of the reason why Every he got flatlined. Every now and again, if you're re- at a really lucky game, you'll see the goalies go at each other. That's the uh, best. Yeah. The I've goalie fight. That. The goalie fight. I've seen Patrick Waugh. Waugh's yeah. yeah. oh, good. <laughs> I just think this conversation has been a revelation that ice- <laughs> they call you Iceman for a reason. You are a degenerate. I like that stuff. <laughs> All right, next. Chuck, this one's for you. Greetings, right. learned panel. My advice for a young MMA writer knee-deep in writing free content on how to take the, bi- uh, the big... Step into paid roles, or is it just the case of making like Rick Ross and hustling? Hmm. Here's one thing I hate about the modern world and modern parlance. Everyone's like, "Yo, man, you gotta hustle." They don't ever explain what the hell that means. You mean just work hard? You can work hard and get nowhere. That doesn't do you any good. You have to work such a different day and age too. And there's so much, there's so much content and so many sites, and you could just run your own blogs and everything. Mm-hmm. It's it's just a different world. Like the ones back in the day, there was certain places that paid, and you wanted to get in those doors. It was just as simple as that, but these days, there are so many places, if you're just trying to get your name out there, bylines and stuff, everybody wants to go this route of just getting exposure, and um, I really, truly don't know. I, I've had people ask me this so many times, how do I start getting paid, or how do I, how do I become you know, a writer? I'm like, you gotta, you gotta show people you can write, that's gotta be the first step, but at some point you gotta say, now I, now I deserve to be paid, and you gotta go into some place, you, you know, some place reputable and start getting paid. I mean. You got to give them the samples, and hopefully that's enough. You know what I mean? But there's really no—I don't know a better route than that. No, the reps, reps. Whether you want to be on air or write, you can't get. And you know, you're not going to be good. You're not going to be great or early. So the only way to get there is reps, and the reps are going to be free, or they'll be offline. But just keep getting reps. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. I would agree. And yeah, like Rick Ross, every day I'm hustling. <laughs> you know that song? It's an old song. This is a yes, I know that song. Uh, but Rick yeah, Ross. I mean, I, just work hard, man. Be nice to people. That's like super important. Like that I've. At some point, you got to know your worth, though. You have to yeah. know that you're worth it. And I feel like that's your own. You have to be able to look at your stuff critically and say, like, I know this is good. It's, it's, I should be paid for this. You also have to know when you're turning in garbage. And I feel like most guys don't know that they're turning in garbage. You know, yeah. so that's a tough one, but I think it's self-examination. After you do the reps, I think you have to learn what you're reading. Is it good or not? And read more than anything. Anybody should read as much as they can. Mm-hmm. People like the people who've established themselves and see what they're doing and try to understand structurally how they do it. You know, yeah. everything about what they're doing and emulate it to an extent. But with that said, it is the best time to try it, to try to create sure. bobsmmablog.com. And before you know it, you can, be, sure. you can be changing the game and doing something different and getting access and getting uh, attention. That Let me way. just say in the MMA side, I don't do as much writing as I used to. In fact, I do almost none. But um, what I have noticed is every time someone sends me an email being like, hey, can you look at my work? It's it's just the same boilerplate stuff as anybody else. Hey, here's my fight picks. Here's my analysis. Right. Here's my whatever. And you have to understand, like, um, the only way you would ever want to do fight picks or analysis is if you are one of the very best people doing it or you can do it on a platform that is one of the biggest. Otherwise, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. You're like, you're not, like, you're not gonna be better than Dan Hardy, right? You're not gonna be better than the, um, as a writer, you're not gonna be better than Chuck. Now, you might be, 
Chances are you're not going to. Probably be. not. Probably, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm you just, just kidding. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but someone, someone was saying, like, I want to get into writing and I want to be as good as, pick, pick your favorite writer, whoever the, the thing is. Chances are you're not going to be as good as them. You might be, but the chances are you're not. What you have to find a way to do is you have to have, an, to your point, an honest assessment of the work. What kind of work can I do that the industry doesn't have yeah. and it needs? True. And you you got to you gotta ask yourself what those questions are. Um and then you have to try, and a lot of your stuff's gonna fail. I've had a lot of things I thought were decent, and then they end up not being great. I had some things I thought were not great that ended up being very successful. So it's like that show yeah. with the Manila folder. That was great. I still stand by that. It was great. I just I got tired off, of it. That's not there anymore, man. It, you know what? I, I've said this a million times. When I was doing that show, I couldn't pay someone to watch it. Then the minute I quit, which I didn't get canceled, I quit. I remember I got I got hit up every day for a for a year, being like, "What happened to the show, man?" I loved it. I'm like, the numbers don't prove that, actually. The numbers prove that you didn't watch. Just starting to take off. It was, yeah, right at the fun. moment. Right at the moment. Uh, I'm still bitter yeah. about everything, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, you know, in general, I mean, in life. <laughs> also, find a good editor. If you can find a good yeah. editor who can help yes. you and yes. get you... Uh, I mean, that's easier said than done. There aren't a ton of them. But if you can find that guy who's going to help you get better, that's what you, you should stick with that guy, you know? Yeah, and also, like, uh, here's the other thing. It's like uh, on the YouTube side of things, for example, like... There's a lot of MMA content on YouTube, but for example, one of the reasons why I explored it personally was I looked around my MMA media brethren, no one's really doing it on their own. There's a lot of sites that have it, and those are great, MMA fighting, this is where we're doing it. But on an individual level, there wasn't anyone who was doing it by themselves. I was like, well, there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Let me see if it worked. Uh, and so far, it's going okay. But it's things like that. It's market opportunities, it's talent opportunities. What does, the mar what does, what does MMA not have that you can provide? But like predictions and analysis, bro, the boat is full. Yeah. Got to get those takes hot. Yeah, and wearing it's really hat, hot. Wearing hats, it's taken. All right, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, ascots are still out there. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, okay, to the table. If you could only watch non UFC MMA, would you be a fan? Now, isn't that oh, a good that's question? That's a good Whoa. question. That's a good question. I would say no. I would say probably not much of them. That's a good. That is actually. So true. you could watch Bellator One, no. Ryzen. Now, would UFC you know not man? exist, or would I just not have access to it? I don't know. It's a good question. Could you follow it? Because if you follow it, at least like you knew what happened. You would know what happened. I think so. Imagine you go. I'll just state the question as is. You could only watch. I don't think so. You know, I went to the last Bellator at Mohegan Sun. Were you at that one too? No. The, the, whatever no. the last one was. Um, who was on that card? It was actually a good card. Well, it was uh, uh, MVP against um, Daly. Daly. Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple of, you know, Roy Nelson was on there. Uh, Mitch broke up. But the, it was, uh, what would you, how would you say it? Like, it was so bad, the, the card, it was depressing in the, in the end. Like the yeah, but how much of that is just bad. luck? Well, I would say that Bell, I find that happens. MVP versus Daly was the it fight. It should have been, and I think that that's part of it. There was an expectation of that fight that just didn't come to They also know. watered down the card. They did a fight. They did. They watered Saturday down the and card. Yeah. And I'm like, let's just say, put all that together, and that happens more often than not. And I, they do have good fights sometimes, uh, frequently. But uh, if you just take that card, and I've been to other ones at Mohegan Sun. I don't know if maybe it's just the venue. They um, That happens, and I think that would not, I don't think I could... I don't think that would carry enough excitement for me in the end. I mean, unless they start the, the matchmaking really, you know, they bring in more talent, there's more, you know, the matchmaking gets, it's not as uh, transparent to like, hey, let's give um, Fortune uh, nine guys in a row who are anonymous that nobody knows. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, yeah. it, I don't know if the model is the same. That's all. Yeah, I, I would still be a fan, but just not as much. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. sure I would watch, but I'm not sure. Two that, guys fighting is always going to be compelling for me, yeah. but, but yeah. Yeah, but what's super interesting is the high, high level of MMA. Like we just saw Israel Adesanya and Kelvin Gastelum, Poirier, Holloway. Uh, I mean, you know, and that's that, that's only that's mostly seen in the UFC. Yeah. And even then, it's, yeah. it's if Musashi's fighting UFC, every time yeah. I'm watching. If it's a uh, yeah, Rory yeah. McDonald, right. you know what I mean? Like there's guys like that you're going to watch. I mean, people watch college basketball. Yeah. I do not know why, but they watch college basketball. Imagine <laughs> you couldn't watch the pros. Virginia was the worst winner I've ever. Had. That was the bad. Do you watch? Stuff. Are you a March Madness guy? Not anymore, but I was obviously forever. But that was because the Big East died and it took a piece of my soul. It was it was territorial. You, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. It was all the modern. I was watch. I was try to watch college bat. I love basketball. I love pro basketball. If you watch pro basketball, I was talking to Chuck about this. I was watching um, Pacers and Celtics last night. If you watch that game, how you can be a fan of college basketball is beyond me. Like the, it's the, they're not. They don't even look the same. It's not even the same species uh, of, of, of athlete, um, but whatever. <laughs> People love terrible things. Uh, all right, next. 
uh, table, what is everyone's thoughts on advertising tattoos? For example, mm -hmm. getting a website or brand tattooed on themselves oh, and oh. being paid by said owner. I find it, this used to happen in UFC very oh, briefly yeah. and in Golden boxing. Palace. Golden Palace was the one. It An is. Actual it, tattoo? A na well, either. Oh, oh, you're talking about, okay, no. No, right. fake temporary. Fake, okay. I think, I think um, they yeah, do yeah, that, uh, KSW does it. Yeah, yeah, guys yeah. Are always you get on the there. back. Yeah. I find it yeah. low budget. I yeah, don't yeah. like I, it. I, I agree well, with you 100%. You know what's funny? I think GSP actually had that in one of his early fights when he fought Ivan Menjivar. Like way oh, yeah? back in the day before he was he in the He might be right. We're not he had, he had it sprayed on to, all over his back. Fight? Yeah. Like this, the, the, Something about the breakthrough the human fight. That 9-11 like fight, it. he's got Golden Palace on the back. It's like, uh. The human billboarding thing is like, I was watching, uh, what's the strong man? Uh, Pooj, whatever. Pujanowski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Marius Pujanowski, the greatest yeah. strongman ever. And uh, obviously he's got a nice big broad back and so did the other guy. And you're like, I, yeah, yeah, so you're like, you're seeing like the ads pretty big and I was like, that makes <laughs> sense, but it doesn't feel right to space, me, man. man. And I don't know why, it's just because it's your skin. I'm like, come on, have some, like there has to be a line, but yeah. maybe I, maybe other people don't feel that way. But uh, I had no problem with the trunks being littered with whatever people wanted on them, but the skin, it feels weird to me. I think if you're going to do it, you got to do it the right way where when people who didn't like you would pay you 30 grand to put their logo on the soles of your shoe. So when you got knocked out, they could see your logo <laughs> as your feet came up. Dude wipes. Yes. Yeah. You know, something like that I thought was okay, but like, it just feels like, oh my God, are we, where are we when we're watching yeah. dudes yeah, get yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing airbrushed on their back? Yeah. And I love KSW. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's a great show. And, and, they, and, and here, I'd love to go to one of their shows. good fighters have done it. So it's not like a thing that only low, you know, low budget yeah. fighters have done, but yeah, I don't know. There's something, yeah. something sad about it, kind of. I know? thought the it question is. actually meant tattoos. I think Vice did uh, this, like, you know, feature on this guy that just had a bunch of face tattoos, and it was just websites and stuff, and <laughs> he would just take the money. They were actually like real tattoos. Would you get an Arby's tattoo on your back? I mean, <laughs> no. who would do that? <laughs> no. Is there any brand you we would get on tattoo on your back? No. I mean, I, what, about, also oh, crazy... what about this? What about the Jordan or the Nike like swoosh logo? There, there's there's a dude that has a Nike tattooed on his face. No, nah, I wouldn't get that. No, Man, I don't this know. is a low rent. I wouldn't get it uh, after the B, right? Bro, they, I work with what they give me. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's like, some classy with some Chinese symbols and some barbed wire. On yeah, that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> some wings. <laughs> no, no. Nope. Any brand you would? Ever I was mad even when the NBA finally agreed to put advertising. I, I was like, I felt like that was like a violation of something that was long held. Uh, yeah, I hate and, it. And too. it opens up. It's one of the things much. I hate about European soccer jerseys. Yeah. Where the logo will be like this on this part of the chest and then the middle will fly Emirates or. Uh, I, I think some kind of look cool though. It depends. Depends who your sponsor is. Well, make up your mind. Is it cool to have those kinds of sponsors you, or no? You, you got to get the right sponsor. Okay, what's the right sponsor? Dynamic. Well, fastener. it depends Dynamic on the team. Dynamic fastener. That is it the depends, answer. It depends on the team, but like, like who is the one for uh, Atletico? Uh, Hyundai is, is a sponsor, and then they have uh, something five hundred. Bro, uh, they used to have one about visiting Azerbaijan on their jerseys. Really? Low rent, man. I mean, Low you know, it's rent. it's not the you know, not the not the not the richest team in the world, you know. I, I don't, but, I hate um, it. And Barcelona's whole thing with the UNICEF thing I didn't like, and even the new oh, one sure. about whatever it is, uh, I forget what the name of the, the brand is. I, mean, I, don't like, I don't like Madrid's either. I don't like any of them, dude, with these yeah. giant ass logos of, of, of brands. It's like, what are, you, what are you looking at here? I know. It sucks. So don't do it. Church American and state, football. man. Too much of an infringement there. Uh, yeah. Or how about the, I don't, do they still do this in American football where you'd see like a wide receiver get tackled and then from the sleeve it would come up and then on the shoulder pads it would be like Gatorade ads. <laughs> you ever seen that? No. And so you'd see them like fumble with it and it'd be like covering a Nike logo or a Gatorade logo and I'd be like, <laughs> oh my God, really? All right, next. Uh, do you believe some MMA fighters quit mid-fight and give up a submission like Paulie said a few weeks back? Of now, course. Brian, I'm going to put this one to you. Because Paulie was on this show and he was like, some MMA fighters are getting beat up and they just want to give their back. And he was saying it about Connor. I, I, I'm just saying, in a general way, do you think what he is saying is true? I do. I do. Hundreds. In a general way, it's the same thing in boxing where you sort of take a punch and you go down to a knee and you wait for the 10 count. You try to rise at 10 yeah. purposely late so the referee waves it off. It's, yeah. a, it's a way of quitting without quitting. I'm. Mm -hmm. For sure. No one wants, like BJ Penn said, only a bitch taps out on strikes. Nobody wants to do that. So. Give up your back, yeah. let him put it around you, you tap the heck out. Yeah. How many yeah. times have you talked to a coach or you know, somebody in that capacity, but usually a coach and they're like, he wanted, you'll hear them say, he wanted a way up, he wanted a way out. They see it, you know what I mean? So it happens. It's probably, I'm guessing the, the better guys at it would basically be the ones that you don't really, they, they look, make it look seamless, but I've certainly seen some 
ones where you're like, dude, come on, he gave up his back. You know, like you just see yeah. him roll into something or whatever, and you're like, he wants out of there. I, I wouldn't name names, on it, but I'm sure Are you I'm saying sure Shane happened. Carwin against Brock Lesnar? Is that what you're saying right now? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. No, I'm not saying that one. But yeah, I have, it, I mean, you've seen him. You've it, happens it, all the time. it happens you all the time. You, you, you see it, um, the high-level pros are good at disguising it. So if you go to like a regional card, I saw one guy who one time was on all fours, and there was another guy standing over him, just punching him in the face, and he wasn't even resisting or hurt. He just he just didn't want to keep doing this anymore, and the referee kind of stepped in. Yeah, but I, you had to watch it. Like he was clearly almost looking at the ref, being like, "Yeah, you know, <laughs> they're just they're, they don't they don't have really the skills to disguise it. A good fighter will find a way." to camouflage it right. a little bit. The um, regional shows especially, the times I've watched them, you'll see multiple of those in a night. Oh yeah, yeah several. You know, sure. There's just guys who, their guys going in there, they're just yeah. trying it out, and they're like, yeah. they realize right away this isn't for them. You'll see guys like 0-1-1, 1-0, 2-1, they want to see if this is yeah. anything to it, and they meet somebody who's a buzzsaw, yeah. and they're like, oh, I've had enough yeah. of this. Yeah. And I, I don't, like in boxing, there's still stigma to it, and I guess there's some stigma to it in MMA about the tapping to strikes. But honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal in, as it used to be in MMA. And, uh, right. it, you know, it's, dude, fighting is awful. It's, like, it's hard. Yeah, if you want out, you want out, man. Yeah. I want out. I haven't even been in. Yeah. Uh, all right, next. I need to rebuild my blown over fence this weekend. And it got me thinking. <laughs> Hypothetical question. It's a Saturday morning. The fence material, tools, and beer are ready. What UFC fighter are you calling to give you a hand yeah, getting the boy. fence back up and running? What a great question. I love this one. Now, I would have said Demetrius fine. Johnson, he but, he's not, oh, yeah. but he's not a not UFC a fighter. fighter. Ah, I was so going to say Stephen Bonner for entertainment, but he's not a UFC fighter. He's I'd say Jim Miller. That guy looks like Oh, what a great call. <laughs> what a great call. He would have call. that fence up within about yeah. 45 minutes, and then it's just beer drinking with Jim Miller. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The beer drinking could have started while you were building the fence. I don't know why the two have to be segregated. That's Probably such a good one. Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Does he seem friendly enough to want to build a fence with? His hands are too big for that. Thing. Well, I mean, he, if, physically, I feel like he's probably uh, no, you know, but that's a, probably that, take most of the work. See, that's a communal experience. You need somebody who you can spend the time okay. with. Okay, all right. Uh, let me You're not that. hiring a manual labor. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think, Brian? Anybody stand out? I mean, it's Jim you're Miller's making me want to bring up Jim Miller type, honest blue collar journeyman level guys that I'm assuming they can work really hard because they probably do that job on the I, I don't know how, how much of a handyman he is, but I would say Diego Sanchez. Yeah. Because he would just work hard and he would probably have a couple beers, a couple pops with me. You know, <laughs> I have share, some good stories to have tell. some crazy I stories. Mean, Forrest Griffin is 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 kind of fits that mold. The a little bit, yeah. yeah. Blue collar guy. Darren Elkins. <laughs> I, can see. I bet he knows how to build he, a fence. So. He probably has some good stories. He'd so. bleed. He'd find a way to bleed. Is there anybody, like, again, because DJ had the construction background, but he doesn't qualify anymore yeah. in his uh, status. Clay, Clay Guido used to be oh, a construction David, Brand, yes, David yes. Branch used to work in construction. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. How did I not know that? So that'd be a decent call as well. Uh, which, which one did you Clay, the, um Clay Guido? Yeah. That's a genius call. The carpenter. Yeah. Yeah. I think he would enjoy it. There's certain guys you have to think, like, would they enjoy the, doing a project? Yeah. That strikes me as a guy who would enjoy doing a given project. The, given the name, you would imagine. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Like, are you, do you have a green thumb at all? Not really. Nah, no. bro. Not me at all. I hate that yeah. stuff. Like, no. yeah, let me go get bit by mosquitoes to do poor craftsmanship. <laughs> I'll pass. Thanks. <laughs> Very sexist answers. Are you going to consider Pearl Gonzalez for this? Uh, should I have? Whatever you like. <laughs> It's up to you. Why would you bring up her name if there's a, not a reason to bring up her name? <laughs> and by the way, she's an Invicta, not UFC. Uh-oh. That's true. Uh -oh. I knew that. Caught you slipping, didn't I? I knew that. I knew that. Caught you slipping. Tell that to the New York State Athletic Commission.